So let's do some baptism traditions. For a, a piece of amusement, I'm going to start with something that's strictly more people reconfirming their faith in Christ than a baptism tradition. But it's still, well, this is Epiphany where uh, those crazy Russian Orthodox believers, and before someone goes on about me saying that half my family is Russian Orthodox, so I get to do those jokes. Um, um, well, at least I get to do those jokes where the missus is not about. Um, <laughs> they chuck themselves in cold water in the snow like this to reconfirm their faith in Christ. That they, And I've actually done this, and it's absolutely crazy. And yes, it's a shock an absolute shock to the system to put it mildly um, not recommended by the way if you're getting on a bit or have heart conditions or anything um, uh, yeah russians are generally as bad uh, uh, as can be uh, i i think in, in the nicest possible way in case my wife sees this um as you can see everyone's wondering in their swimsuits and everything else and doing uh, and blessing themselves there. Funky, lovely, funky shorts of that guy in front there. As I say, it's not strictly baptism for most, it's more where they're reconfirming their faith since it's epiphany. But, moving on from that, which I thought I'd use for a bit of, you know, everything has some humour in it, if you look at it from a certain angle, I find. We'll look at a capital of baptism explained. Let's see if I can find someone who will do it in a reasonably short time frame. Because if someone goes into really deep theology on it, we could be here for... We could be here for some, some time. Okay, let's, let's see how... Um, let's use this, Sacraments 101. That looks like reasonably short. Will we get one of those great adverts? You constantly overwhelmed with your workload. Look at this schedule. Perfectly I'm constantly overwhelmed with these rather with every task annoying adverts. <laughs> Lovely bit of chalk there. Why does the Catholic Church baptize infants instead of waiting till they're old enough to understand the faith? Oh dear, you don't want to be asking that question, do you? We'll start arguing with those. Those naughty evangelicals that all be punching each other on the church steps if you do that. But anyway. Why do Catholics baptize infants? Great question. Well, first things first. Baptism is the first sacrament all Christians receive. Dave it's Dwyer, I love it. It's full membership in the body of Christ. The other two steps are confirmation and Eucharist. And together, these three are known as the sacraments of initiation. They certainly are, but a few points um, that Father Dwyer might get back to is one confirmation used to come last, <laughs> and in some places still does. Um, the order of the confirmation Eucharist has swapped around several times in various bits of the Christian world. And in the Eastern churches, they don't really have confirmation. They have chrismation and the Eucharist and baptism all together in the Eastern Orthodox churches. And... I won't say all the Eastern churches, as there's a variety of Eastern churches with their own traditions, but since I can't be pre that precise about every single church, I advise you to look them up in detail for localised exceptions. Now, we're not talking about hazing rituals here, but rather the building blocks for every Christian life. The faithful are born anew by baptism, strengthened by the sacrament of confirmation, and receive in the Eucharist the food of eternal life. By means of these sacraments of Christian initiation, they thus receive in increasing measure the treasures of the divine life. Not only is baptism an initiation into the faith community, it also frees us from sin. You see, all of us are born with what we call the stain of... Um, and that's another point where the, um, the Catholic and Orthodox worlds will differ. 
Catholicism will, uh, as like myself, will believe in original sin. The Orthodox do not hold original sin as a, a teaching. Uh, they tend to view it, a sin as more of a sickness and something that men tend to. And baptism cleanses us of that stain, sort of like a Windex for the soul. So oh, my Lord, I've never heard baptism would describe that way. But it's quite an interesting it's approach, I suppose. I can just imagine, like, um, need of salvation. And God offers imagine that approach. Free gift in the grace of baptism. Somebody used completely free clip art for that that backdrop as well. I haven't seen clip art like that since for about twenty odd years, where you're playing around with you know, old editions of Publisher or something. I haven't said that. It's a, a reasonably good basic explanation. It would be foolish to overlook the basics of the explanation due to the trimmings. It's also important to know that infant baptism is not a new phenomenon. It's been around since the time of the early Christian communities when entire families would be baptized together, both adults and children. But even because I believe in fairness in dialogue, while I believe that I will point out there are beliefs against it and it's not an, a universally held belief, and you would find some evangelicals, for example, who would argue against that. Before that, baptism makes its debut at the hands of the guy who's got it in his name, John the Baptist. And he was a little humbled by one of the guys he happened to baptize. Nice bit of stained glass there. Indeed it was. Jesus who really emphasized the importance of baptism when, before he ascended into heaven, he instructed his apostles, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teaching and why do I find me some coloring pens so I can get out of this monochrome bit, bit of art? them to observe all that I have commanded you. We are all called to be disciples, members of an enormous Christian community. So when an infant is baptized, it's not their decision, obviously. A baby is baptized into the faith of the community, which means it's up to us to pass on our faith to that child. So who exactly can be baptized? Anyone. Well, that's not exactly true. There's no double dipping in baptism. Uh, this is another point where some of the Eastern churches differ, although this is this is an argumentative point and not all of them w will re-baptize, but for Catholics, you can only be baptized once, generally. Once you've been baptized, you can't go back for seconds, even if you were baptized initially in another yep. faith tradition. I should add to that, if you're baptized Anglican, they're not going to re-baptize you if you become a Catholic. You've already been, had a valid baptism. It's considered a Christian baptism. If you're Orthodox and turn up and you want to become a Catholic, you've already been validly baptized. They're not going to do another baptism for you. Baptism imprints on the soul an indelible spiritual sign, the character, which consecrates the baptized person for Christian worship. Because of the character, baptism cannot be repeated. When we celebrate the sacrament of baptism, there are a few key ingredients needed. Water, there's no such thing as a dry baptism. Oil for anointing, which symbolizes the gift of the Holy Spirit. Or which would probably be called chrism, really, and is normally centered with balsam or other things. Although they're aiming this at a basic level of knowledge. A candle, signifying that the newly baptized has been enlightened by Christ and will now be a light for the world. A white garment, which represents being newly washed of sin and putting on Christ. And you'll also need a priest or deacon, parents, godparents, and of course the baby. Ideally, the godparents should be Catholics as well, but it doesn't always get full to the letter on that one. And there are ways around it, and sort of um, you can get. <sighs> Um, sort of exceptions to it and muck around with it. It's too complicated a topic to go into right now, but whereas my own godparents were very solidly old school Irish Catholic, nowadays you might find people who were less solidly Catholic acting as godparents or who were from even outside of Christian tradition acting as spiritual guides and mentors. After a formal blessing of the water, all those present proclaim their faith speaking for the infant who probably isn't up to talking just yet. 
And then water is poured over the baby's forehead three times while the priest or deacon declares, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The ceremony concludes with prayers that accompany the oil, the candle, and the white garment. Now all of that is for a full-on church celebration of the sacrament of baptism. But in an emergency, anyone can baptize anywhere. Yes, indeed they can. Uh, and this comes back to Mr. Russell Brand's baptism, although that doesn't strike me as an emergency. I don't think there was any shortage of Anglican vicars or Catholic priests or Orthodox priests in in London that day where Russell could not have arranged to a, a conversion or a baptism with them. Uh, so it strikes me as Bear Grylls is probably towards the evangelical end of the of the Anglican Church or and therefore is a, more of a fan of adult baptism and not of the what he might see as a ritualized form of baptism like this. You don't need a priest or a deacon or even all of those props. The bare minimum is just plain old water and the words, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. But that's really just for use in an emergency. Yeah, yeah. As he said, as it comes up, danger of death. I've done it once for someone who requested it. He was dying in front of me, and there was no time to call a priest. And it's a very traumatic memory. He asked me to do it, otherwise, I, and I made him. Even though he was near death, I made sure he asked me a couple of times, because the gravity of doing it is a really big thing. It's not something just for a giggle. The church usually calls in danger of death. This trimmed down version is not intended for use by grandparents who are babysitting their as yet unbaptized but otherwise healthy grandchild. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, the, the, this, this is something that comes up endlessly in religion. Um, Mixed marriages where one parent is Catholic and one is not, and grandparents do their nut about the the grandkids not being baptized, as he knows that it is not sufficient reason to take them down to the kitchen sink and throw some water on them. It would actually, unfortunately, be valid, as, but it wouldn't be licit, and it would impose on the kid with a load of obligations as well for the rest of their life, and would create a huge headache for the clergy. It's simply not a good enough reason some common misconceptions about baptism. First is that the baby's godparents have to be married to each other. That's not common, true. but not true. Tr tr always. They are married to each other. There's nothing that says that they can't be married to other people or even be single. Another misconception is that Catholics only baptize babies. Nope. Adult baptism is alive and well in the Catholic Church. The rite of Christian initiation for adults, more commonly referred to as RCIA, is exactly what it sounds like, a program for adults who want to become Catholic. Well, they've got, and they've got it easy for baptism. Wait till I show you the adult baptism for the Orthodox. <laughs> Wait till you see that. They don't just pour a flag of water over that, those chaps. Wait till you see that one. The process culminates with baptism, usually held during the Easter vigil service, a time when all of us in the faith community renew our baptismal commitment to live as disciples of Jesus Christ. But you don't have to wait for Easter to do that. You do it every time you step into a church and bless yourself with holy water. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. Remember, even though you can only celebrate the sacrament of baptism once in your life, it's something to be lived out every day. That's a very good basic guide. He's obviously, Father Dyer is obviously talking at basic level, but that's actually required to communicate the faith sometimes there's no point in assuming his audience is is me who will waffle on about it and, and throw theology back and forth with him in fact i'd be an annoying parishioner because i fit into that mode of parishioners who almost attempt to know as much as the the priest which can get right up priest noses anyway here's adult orthodox baptisms Let's find uh, if I can find a short one. Oh yeah, here we go. This is um one one minute and twenty one. A lamb for a household, and if the household. Is My gosh, they're doing it in English, so it must be a west. Into the bath, get in your bath. What are you? What are you? 
What are you afraid of? Get in that bath. Yeah, These are traditional readings from the Orthodox baptism. I'll show you a, a, an infant's Orthodox baptism afterwards, which is somewhat different than a, a Catholic one. Oh, they're taking it easy on him. <laughs> oh, no, he's going under. And he'll be going under again twice. Oh, man, man. Triple immersion, which is common for for Orthodox baptism. Sometimes you will see in very posh versions where they will have an adult baptism situation where they will have sort of a, a walk-in sort of marble pool for it or something, but that's uncommon. You'll only find it in very, very posh situations. Um, infant Orthodox baptism. Now, there's some really very silly but attempt versions of infant Orthodox baptism on the web, on YouTube, such as this um, Georgian priest. I don't know what the heck he's meant to be doing there. That's some next level of stupidity. The way he's carrying out that baptism, really. That's it's the baby's not a helicopter, mate. Uh, really, tr truly, that's really, really shocking. Right, I find it quite hilarious, by the way, that according to the notes down the bottom from this young lady's, you know, it got taken down for a nudity of a minor, really. A baby being baptised. So she has to cover with a smiley. Anyway, if you watch. I the servant of God that is baptised in the name of the Father and of the Son. Um, Spirit, <laughs> man, triple immersion, which we do sprinkling. Uh, and if you want to hear somehow when people have silly rails and get almost a punching point, get a Catholic person, especially someone like a clergyman and a an Orthodox clergyman, and get them arguing about sprinkling versus immersion. Oh my, the argument will never stop. And it may be sent into extreme pettiness and silliness and shoutiness. <sighs> I personally find it very tiresome, um, very, very tiresome. Um, a couple of other points for Orthodox kids is they will also be getting oil, but it's used in a more liberal amount than with us Catholics, and they will also be getting the Eucharist for the first time, whereas we don't get that till later, well, unless we're Eastern Catholics, but that's a different story. And if I start covering the Eastern Catholics, I'll be here quite a time. And finally, we'll do... The Anglican baptism and an evangelical baptism. I'm trying to find short ones because obviously there's a limit to what I can I can sort of go over, and otherwise the video will stretch out to infinity. Okay, we have an Anglican baptism of it here in Christ Anglican Church in that's Phoenix in Arizona. Jen, who looks like um sergeant in the in the US military. In the name of the Father. And of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 Couple of points before I skip past this one. The um, shell he used is a scallop. Now, it may not be immediately evident that has actually Christian symbolism and was also used as a symbol for pilgrims in the Middle Ages, sometimes called the palmer's shell. You'd find it sort of pinned to cloaks or used as a stylistic device and so on. Thank 
receive this child in the congregation of Christ's flock, and do sign her with the sign of the cross. As is typical to all forms of uh, baptism, it's basically welcoming people into the congregation for the future. I'm going to end on evangelical baptism. Now, evangelical baptisms often tend to be very, very lengthy, especially if they're apostolic um, churches. I was trying to find a couple of apostolic, apostolic churches near me in Hackney, but because they're all black apostolic churches, and they're all mainly African or West Indian. The services run on till three, four hours, and they are very, very lengthy. They don't muck around. They well, their services are like precision execution, you with like almost military discipline, and <laughs> nothing to sneeze at. The Baptist church near me has massive services and. Really, they go on, on and on and on. I thought the Orthodox Divine Liturgy was lengthy, but they, they're beginners compared to them. Let me just re-spell that, since I noticed I've spelled it wrongly. I think this one from uh, BBC will do nicely. I'm going to get baptised. <laughs> I'm quite excited about that. Savannah's church follows the Pentecostal tradition, which... Oh, that would do nicely, be because the Pentecostal church is, is... Baptism in the Holy Spirit is the central event of Pentecostalism and an essential part of salvation. My, my friend died. <laughs> which was uh, just a really hard time. I didn't really, yeah, I didn't believe it. So we always used to, you know, go play netball together. Sometimes we'd cross paths in school and she was always, you know, picking me up when I was down. Okay, that's a bit dark, but it is a common theme of why people may return to or leave Christianity, death and mortality. When you haven't experienced like, the loss of somebody, life doesn't really prepare you for anything like that. But we, we go to the church you know, every week. You know, I knew that was important, just like to keep going and try to try, you know, keep connecting with God. Obviously, we are in the, oh yeah, the lovely COVID era. It was a place where I kind of felt safe. And I, I wasn't really able to cry in a long time. And then a couple of months after, we had a service. And I just, my legs started kind of shaking and my arms and my hands started shaking a lot and my heart started beating really fast and you know i could i could hear it beating in my in my chest and the tears just kind of started streaming down my face Hallelujah. 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 and then pastor said if you can hear your heart beating in your chest really fast, if you can, you know, your hands are shaking, you said... You okay, know. the major difference, of course, about Pentecostals, as you can see, be compared to the Catholics, the Orthodox, and the Anglicans, is all three of the previous churches have a kind of um, ritualistic approach. It's not wrong or right, it's just different. Rituals are part of life. They define our life and we group our lives around them anyway as well. Um, so I'm not. I do really find the arguments tiresome about the the idolatry of infant baptism, etc. And I tend to snoo zone out on them quite a lot nowadays. That's God. That's God's. You know, connecting with you. That's you know, that's the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for this day. And I just thought, wow. I want it to kind of be a more familiar feeling, and yeah, that's that's why I really want to get baptized. Yeah. We call it being born again. 
Do me, Lord, baptize with the old old visor there. He's done a, a kind of one stunned under the um, war, but I have seen evangelical churches do it two or three times. Now I'm going to try and find my own church where I was baptized as a kid, which is in Dalston. Oh, here we go. Um, this, this is a mass from inside it. You can actually see it from inside there. It's it's actually empty at the minute because it was probably before the mass. But uh, my parents were also baptized, well, not baptized, married there in, in the mid-1960s. And I'll try and find an outside view of it before we end. Oh, there we go. See if I can find it. It would be nice if someone had done a couple of photos and I could skip around it a bit. But that photo, photo will do for now. Um, it's of its time. It's a, a bit. It looks. Um, it's a bit brown and a bit sort of solidly constructed, like churches of that era were. They weren't overly exciting. It's quite reasonable inside and quite clean and tidy, as you can see. That big cross is still there and the Alpha and Omega mot motifs over the door. Um, I do occasionally visit it for Mass. But uh, that's where I'm going to end. Anyone who has anything to add, um, so long as you do it respectfully, please. I do not wish to have religious sectarianism in the comments of back and forth. If you're going to talk about Christianity and put yourself forward as a member of a Christian domination, please remember what you are representing. Please do not call anyone idol worshippers or heretics or schismatics in my comment section. I don't want to see it, and I will remove it. Thank you.